Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vnchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vnchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757-230-2110. James had problems. He would go to his parents with his problems, and you know what they would say? He'd be like, well, what would Jesus do, you know? <laughs> then they gave him a bracelet. They gave him a bracelet, and... Um, and he started selling those bracelets, you know? <laughs> Made some money selling bracelets. What would be cool is a what would James do bracelet, right? Same initials, different meaning. <laughs> Completely different meaning. You're driving down the street, you get cut off in traffic. You fuss them out, your pastor gonna be like, yo, you got a what would Jesus do bracelet on? You're like, uh-uh, that's what would James do. <laughs> Man, I love that. I love that. All right. Well, welcome. We're so glad you're here and to welcome those uh, that are joining us online. Now, did you come in today expecting that God would talk to you? Yes. 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 So let's declare it. Yes. Right? Because I believe that he wants to do something uh, different with you today. So you're going to go on a journey with me and we'll see how that arrives, how we all arrive and how we land on that one. Okay, guys, I'm going to start out by telling you a little story, right? It has a meaning. So <clears throat> my story is going to be what I'm going to call a parable, right? Because it has a hidden meaning here. Well, there once was this man, and he had this passion, uh, a passion for being able to clear his land, and he had a lot of land, and he wanted to set up these trees and do this magnificent, ma magnificent stuff with his property. And so he took his very best axe, and every day he would go out and with all his effort and he would chop down trees and he got about four trees, maybe three to four a day, which is pretty terrific, right? And so uh, he, as faith has it, right, he began to find out about the power saw, <laughs> the power chainsaw. <clears throat> and so he decided he'd go down to the local hardware store and, it, you know, to find one and see what this is all about. So he went down there and he's walking up and down the aisle. And as he's walking up and down the aisle, a sales clerk sees him and decides to come over and talk with him. Well, when he was engaging him in this conversation, he sees that this guy is the real deal, that he needs this, the best equipment that this man could have, right? And so he directs the man to his attention. So the sales clerk says, look at this model. This model is the best model I have, the most powerful one in the shop. And it not only can, uh, you know, it's powerful, it cuts down like 30 to 40 trees per day over your own effort of three to four. This is the one you want. Well, the man can hardly believe it. And he goes, oh, this is fantastic. I'll take it. So he buys it. He gets in his car and he drives back, right, right in his truck. And so when he gets to his property, it's late. So he goes to bed. But all night long, he's dreaming and dreaming about this, uh, this uh, new piece of equipment he has and how that's going to help him. So the morning, he can't wait. So he rushes out, you know, doesn't even have breakfast. He goes out. He takes his, uh, you know, his uh, chainsaw. He goes out to the pasture. And so he goes and he starts to try to cut down some trees, right? But he can't not even cut down one. And the man becomes frustrated and upset and says, hey, what's happening here? I'm angry now. And he feels like he's been swindled, right? So he decides to take his chainsaw. He throws it in his truck and he get, drives all the way back to that hardware store. He finds that clerk and he goes up and he says, hey, you sold me a piece of junk. And the guy looked at him like, huh? That's my best equipment. He goes, no, you sold me a piece of junk. You said it would cut down 30 to 40 trees and it won't even do one. And the guy looked at it perplexed, right? The sales clerk was very perplexed. So he picks up the chainsaw and he's examining it. Then all of a sudden he takes a cord and he, he uh, rips the cord, Ring! the engine roars. Now, the guy steps back and he goes, hmm, what's that sound, <laughs> right? I'll give you a moment to think about it. What's that sound? You see, the man had the power in his hands, and he didn't even realize it. 
He didn't even realize that he had the power in his hand to accomplish things. And here you go. Here's the moral of the story. We are like that. Those of us who know Jesus Christ, those of us who have confessed Jesus Christ with our mouth, right? We believe in our heart and we confess him with our mouth that he is Lord. What happens is we are given the Holy Spirit that resides in us. And it's this awesome, awesome power, right? But many of us, we don't recognize the power that God has given us. Not at all. And dare I say, even be able to use that for being able to accomplish your life purposes and to handle the difficulties that come in. It's like we are like that man who's trying to use his axe, right? to accomplish the wonderful things that God has. And so today, I want to talk to you, because we're in a series called Challenge, Accepting the Challenge. And today, my message is titled, Discovering the Power, and I am going to talk about the Holy Spirit. And so I want you to just uh, go somewhere with me. And so first, we're going to start out with prayer. So why don't you all just uh, dial back, close your eyes, and I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to come even more. Yes, Father. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come in even more than you are here right now, Lord, and that you would open us up to receive what it is you have. Father, in and of myself, I bring nothing, but with you, Father, with your power through the Holy Spirit, you can move mountains, Lord. You said if we didn't doubt that we could move a mountain. And for many of us, Father, we are facing mountains in our lives. And so, Holy Spirit, come. Come and fill your people. Come and teach us your truth, Lord. You are the one true God, and we are leaning into you today. We are leaning into your word to hear what you would show us, that we might have more power when we leave than when we came in. So, Father, be glorified in all that is said and done today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, I want to talk to you today up and out of the scripture that we've been in in this series, the, the theme scripture. It's on your outline. Why don't you pull that out, and I'm going to read it for you. It's in Matthew 28, 18, and 20. Now, it says this, All authority in heaven and on earth have been given to me. Jesus is talking. Therefore, here's your first exercise. Put your name in right underneath that. Therefore, so for me, I'd put therefore Sharon. You put therefore Bill or therefore you know, Bonnie, therefore, whoever, right? You just put your name in there. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now, that is our theme verse. Why did I have you put your name in it? Because that's directed to you. If you are a believer, that is something that God has given you. That's part of the purpose for your life. That's part of your mission that he has given to you. And how are we going to accomplish this mission? Well, through the Holy Spirit. You see that last phrase, surely I'm with you always to the end of the age. That's a promise of his infilling. And so we're going to discover what does that mean. And the way we're going to discover it is through three questions. I have them on your outline. We're going to go through these three questions to see exactly who this Holy Spirit is and what does he do. First question on your outline, who are you, Holy Spirit? Who are you, Holy Spirit? And so what we're looking at here is, if I, were to, if I were to ask you, if I took a survey of the whole congregation, what I would find is that there would be a lot of you that would say, you know, I know who God the Father is. Got that one, right? The creator, I got that. And I know who Jesus Christ is. He's the son of God. But this Holy, this Holy Spirit, sometimes referred to as the Holy Ghost, like, what, who is he, right? <laughs> well, what's that about? You know, that one I'm kind of confused, or I really don't know so much about that one. And so today, I want you to understand who he is. And in order to do that, I'm going to give you a definition. I'm going to kind of define him, right? I'm going to talk to you about that. And we're going to do that through a couple of scriptures. The first one to drive home this point is in Deuteronomy 6.4. It says this, Hear, O Israel. Let me rephrase that. Hear, O Vineyard Community Church, Right? The Lord your God, the Lord is one. So what is this saying? It's saying that God is one God. He's not a plurethra. He's not a whole bunch of gods. See, in that time that this was written, uh, the Greek mythology and stuff came out, so you had a lot of gods like Zeus and Apollos, right, Poseidon. You had all this. But this statement is making a very clear statement that God is one. Amen. He is one God. 
And then the revelation begins to unfold here. And we see this, and I'm going to teach a little Hebrew here. The scripture in Genesis 1.1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And uh, if you notice on your outline, I put a little parentheses there, and I put a Hebrew word uh, in, in there for you. And that word is Elohim, right? And so it could be read then, right? We could go back and we could read this in the beginning. Elohim created the heaven and the earth. And what it's talking, uh, earth, and what he's talking about is God has created, but in the Hebrew, the last part of that, the im, the I am, that has this meaning, it has a connotation, a flavor of being plural, right? And so all of a sudden, the one God has a plural aspect to him. And so what we're talking about here is there's this essence of who God is, and, and so it's being revealed to us. It's kind of being uh, opened up for our understanding, and we refer to this as the Trinity, right? And so what it is is that there is one God, but he's in different forms. He's actually in three forms. If you were to read the scripture, he is God the Father, he is God the Son, and he is God the Spirit. So it's three in one. And I know that kind of blows some of your minds. How can that be? So let me give you a very natural uh, example of what that looks like, right? You could take uh, the element of water, H2O. And it comes in various forms, but contains the same property. For example, H2O, you could have it in liquid form, like water that we would drink in a glass of water. You could have it form into an ice cube, right? And so it changes into a solid form. Or it can be a vapor, like when we boil on the stove and, and the steam comes up, right? So you can have these three forms, but that all retains the same property, this is what it's like when we talk about the Trinity, when we talk about one God in three persons. So when we drill down the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is God, right? It's not an it. It is a person. It is the person of God. And so this person of God called the Holy Spirit, it has a personality, okay? It's got feelings, right? You can grieve it, you know? You, the Holy Spirit wants to, to come and comfort you. He wants to communicate with you. He talks to you. And so we have this Holy Spirit that, that has uh, all the, the forms that we would kind of expect, you know, in a person. Now, the Holy Spirit is fully God in all its characteristics and all its attributes. So what we see here with the Holy Spirit is that he's omnipresent, right? He, or omnipresent so he's everywhere yes and so we also see him as omnipotent which is all powerful and he's omni love that means he loves us he now nah, he doesn't just love us he is love right and he cares for us and he takes care of us and he makes sure that we uh, are able to hear the gospel and and to perhaps find salvation you see the holy spirit is from everlasting to everlasting he has no beginning and he has no end he is like god in all ways so when you ask the question, who are you, Holy Spirit? What comes back, what should come back, is that the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is God himself. Do you see that? Next question, when we're expanding on our understanding of the Holy Spirit, what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. I could unpack this thing for a whole entire year and still never get to it all, right? So what I'm going to do is take a couple of scriptures here that I think gives us the general idea of what the purpose of the Holy Spirit is, and we're going to look at some of the things that he, he moves and how he works. So the first one on your outline, right, is he brings conviction. That's what goes in there. He brings conviction. John 16, 8 says, when he came, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. Now I want you to circle sin, righteousness, and judgment. He comes to bring conviction. The Holy Spirit brings conviction. He brings conviction of sin because all of us have fallen short of the glory of God. He brings conviction about righteousness. He brings the conviction about righteousness so that we know what does it look like to stand rightly before God. And then he brings conviction about judgment that we each and every one will stand before the Lord and give an account of how we spent this last, uh, you know, spent our life, right? And so we know that that's coming. And so in that knowledge... It helps us to be able to guide us towards repentance and change and being able to, to make our lives right. So we see the Holy Spirit bringing conviction. 
Also, I don't think any salvation can happen without the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit leads us into salvation. He brings us into salvation. In Romans 8, 9, it says, You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if not, does not have a Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. And so what it's talking about is believers and unbelievers. If you do not have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you are not a believer. You do not belong to God. That's what that's saying very plainly, is it not? Because here you go, this is what happens. The moment we decide with our mouth to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died on the cross for our sins, that God raised him back up, and he sits at the right hand of the Father, when we confess those things, we believe in our heart, and we confess what happens, bam, the Holy Spirit just comes in right at that very minute, right at that minute. The minute that you pray that, not only do you encounter uh, salvation, but the Holy Spirit comes in, he moves in, and he wants to be part of, of your whole entire life, right? He takes up residence inside of you. You see, the Holy Spirit becomes the very essence of Jesus Christ to us, and that leads us to the next point. He the Holy Spirit wants to universalize, right? He universalizes the presence of Jesus. He universalizes the presence of Jesus. Well, what do you mean? Let's look at the scripture first. John 16, 5 and 7, it says this. This is what Jesus says. Now I'm going to him who sent me. None of you asks me why, or asks me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But listen, but verily, truly, I say unto you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate, which is the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And so what Jesus was trying to explain to the 12 disciples at that moment is that if he goes away, what happens then? He can be here for all time, for everyone, throughout all history, throughout all time right? So he's universalized. He's everywhere. And that's why we can experience him and have him in our hearts and move in his power today. The Holy Spirit also does this next one. He equips us to live life empowered in Christ. He equips us to live life empowered in Christ. John 14, 26 says, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and make you remember all that I have told you. What happens here is the promise of the Holy Spirit. His job is when you sit down to open up your Bible, he's sitting right there with you. The author of the book is sitting there with you and it explains to you what you're reading. And then if you have eyes to see, when you're walking this life out, when you're walking the day in, the day out, the Holy Spirit is communing with you, talking to you, and he's saying, Shh, remember that you read? Here it is here. Remember this? This is where this is. This is what you do here. This is the answer. This is the value. This is what you're to do, right? So he's in constant uh, uh, step with us, and he's empowering us through the name of Christ to be able to live successfully. Another thing that the Holy Spirit does is he is your lifelong companion, right, and comforter. He gives us comfort, and he is our companion. The Holy Spirit, I... I would say of the Holy Spirit that he's the only one that truly sees us. Most of us walk around in life and we have a mask on. We don't let people see us. But you see, the Holy Spirit can see past the mask. He can actually see who you are. And here you go, he loves you. He doesn't get freaked out that you don't have it all together, you have weaknesses, you got problems. He, he doesn't get freaked out. Matter of fact, when everybody else will leave us, he says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be there. I'll be there for you for your whole entire life, right? We see this in the scripture in uh, Romans 8, uh, 26. It says, in the same time, the spirit also comes to help us, weak as we are. For we do not know how we ought to pray. See, there's the utter, I, I don't know what to do. The spirit himself pleads with God for us in us in groans and words that cannot be expressed, that are not expressed. And so what you see and what I felt when I wrote this down is that there would be people that would arrive today and you're in a really hard place, right? You're in a really hard place. And I felt as I wrote that down that, that God wanted me to tell you today, right, that he sees you 
and that you are not alone. Where you're at right now, you're not alone. He's with you. He's walking with you. And you might be mad as snot that things are happening to you, but he says, I'm with you, and I will never leave you nor forsake you, no matter what you do. Even if you refuse to believe me, I will not forsake you. Okay, Lord, I gave that word. So this is what the Lord is. He comes through the Holy Spirit, and he is a lifelong companion. He's a friend, and he brings comfort. The last one that I have time to share with you today is the Holy Spirit is your source of freedom. I love this. He's your source of freedom. And in 2 Corinthians 3, 17, it says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, what? There is freedom. Say it again. There is freedom. Right. And so what we see here is that there's so many of us, we get into these self-destructive behaviors, right? You know, these, these behaviors that kind of rob us from who we were intended to be, they kind of control us. They control us. Let's be real. They control us. They actually like put us in jail, right? And you see the Holy Spirit says, no matter what it is, no matter, I hear it's no matter if it's food, if it's sex, it's entertainment, if it's money, it doesn't matter. God says, that when the Holy Spirit comes and resides in you, you are able to be set free. He will actually give you the power to say no. He will give you the power and the strength inside to stand up and to fight back, okay? So the Holy Spirit is your source of freedom, but you've got to lean into him. You've got to lean into him. Now, I just rambled through really quickly those verses. I gave you six of them there, right? You can see how deep it is. Friends, you want to spend time in the Word of God because there's so much more than what I just brought to you, right? You want to know more about who He is, you know, His purpose in your life. And so you, you must inquire into the Word of God. Now, to be honest with you, the purpose of the Holy Spirit is really to come and to help me and to help you to be able to journey this life as children of the God Most High. Do you see that? He journeys with us so that we can be successful in being children of the God Most High. And so that is his purpose. That's why he's here for us. And so then that pushes me right to that third question. Well, then, Sharon, how do I encounter him and experience the Holy Spirit today? How do I do that today? I hear you, but how do I experience it today? You know, as I was preparing for this, I came to realize that I have been walking with the Lord for, for 41 years. I got saved when I was 18. That tells you how old I am, okay? But I've been walking with him a long time. And so I thought this scripture, this kind of describes my general sense of who the Holy Spirit is. In John 3, 8, it says, this is what it says, right? The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can, uh, just as you can hear the wind, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. You can't tell how the Spirit is, is, is quite moving. It's an experience. It's, it's not an it. You are to experience. You're to walk out and try to figure this thing out, right? And again, I said I've been following the Lord for many, many years, uh, and I have seen over the, t the time I've been with him do remarkable things. And I want to share with you a couple of those today because why? I want to build your faith. I want to show you. First of all, you've got to realize I am nothing normal. I mean, <laughs> nothing normal is what Andy says. No, <laughs> I am nothing special. I am oh so normal. Okay? Yeah, see if you're awake there. In other words, I'm not super smart, Right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm not super talented, right? I, I have a learning disability. I've had a lot of things in my life happened uh, to me that would knock me down and, and I should be kept down, but God has brought me up. So I want to share with you, though, in my journey, what God is showing me, what he's doing through me, right? And so some of the things, there are a couple of things I want to share. One of the things that God uses is he uses me to help bring healing to people, right? He's used me over and over with that. Well, what does that look like, Sharon? <laughs> you know, I've seen him, I've seen him heal people uh, that we've prayed for with cancer all the way to, to he's used me just to pray for somebody with a backache, toothache, right? The flu. And so God uses that. I was thinking about one of the ladies that I had prayed for. She was in her mid-30s, right? She had come to talk to me and asked me to pray for her one Sunday because she had gotten pregnant in about the Fourth trimester, she, not fourth trimester, fourth month, she lost the baby. 
right? And she was heartbroken. And so she came and she was talking to me and, and just asking me, how am I going to get over this pain? And, and so I prayed with her, right? I just prayed with her and loved on her. And then, you know, some time went by and we were corresponding, we were texting and stuff. And then about not quite a year later, she calls me and tells me I'm pregnant, <laughs> you know? And so we were excited together. And, and so I blessed her, I prayed for her, and I blessed her. And then I saw her and her husband probably about the fourth month again. They had come up for prayer, and they were very concerned because they had an ultrasound, which showed that they had not one but two babies, which is pretty cool. But then the babies had abnormalities. And so there was even a suggestion that perhaps she should terminate the pregnancy. And so she came up, and when she was telling me her story, I asked her, I said, well, what do, you, what do you think? What do you want? And she started crying. She goes, I want these so bad, and I don't care. I don't care if they're not going to be normal. And I said, okay, let's pray. And so the Father, the Holy Spirit, moved on me to lay my hands on her stomach, and I, and I laid my hands on her husband and said, hey, help me. And we prayed, and we prayed for a normal birth. We prayed that they both would be healthy and that they would actually be able to be carried to the term, right? And so they went out, and as time progressed, she would text me and tell me I was going, wasn't looking good for almost to the end of her, uh, her time of being pregnant. And she said, you know, I, I'm feeling good, but she had to go in for a C-section because of the difficulties. And sure enough, she did. She went in for the C-section, and I was praying, and I had been praying all along now, believing that God was going to do something. He was going to heal. And the babies came out, two boys, beautiful, and they're both normal. Okay? Yes. So that's God's goodness. That's God's goodness there. Yes. It's, it, God does mysterious things. He does mysterious things. And that's just one example. Um, another one I wanted to bring, I felt I needed to say, uh, I talked a little bit about it last night, but I needed to bring it here today, right, is that, God, I've seen him do remarkable things. I I've, I've saw him do stuff when there is no hope, absolutely zero hope. Because in my last story, you could have went, yeah, you know, it's in the womb, so, you know, right? Maybe the technician was wrong. But let me tell you this next one, and there are two of them. I want to show you how they're back-to-back. -back. I got a call. <clears throat> there was a man. His wife was in our church. He was not. He was not a believer, and he had a brain aneurysm. Right, And so he was in the hospital, and he was in a coma. He wasn't expected to recover. And so they called, uh, they called us. And so I went with Andy, and Andy and I went to the hospital. And uh, his name is Cesar, right? And so when we were there, his wife's Gloria. And so we start talking to Gloria. And, and so we just lay our hands on. We anoint him with oil. And we ask the Lord, even on the way up, I was praying because I knew he didn't know the Lord. And I was like, Father, he doesn't know you. Holy Spirit, you need to heal him so he can proclaim you because he will forever be lost because of the reality of, of salvation and the importance of speaking out that you believe in the one true God, right, before you stand before him. And, and so in my pleading and praying, we went, we anointed him, and nothing, <laughs> nothing. And so I was like, oh, boy. So I loved on the wife, and we walked away, and I kept praying. I was like, Lord, why did you send me here if you weren't going to do anything, right? And, and so I was pleading with the Lord. And before I could get home, I get a phone call. He came out of his coma, right? Well, both, that blows Andy and I away, right? <laughs> Whenever God uses you, you're like, whoa, you know, because it's not us. It's the Holy Spirit. And so he comes up out of the coma, and he says, <clears throat> the wife said, uh, he wants to see you tomorrow. So I went to see him. I thought, okay, Lord, we got this one. So when I went in, he's sitting there eating, right? He's sitting there eating. And as we were talking, I said, I believe the Lord uh, brought you back here and didn't let you die because you weren't ready to meet him and he didn't want you to be forever lost. And in that presentation, the man gave his life to Christ. You see that? Right, yes. Now, here you go. Here's one right behind that, right? A young girl, her name is Heather. She, uh, she did not come to this church, but her father did. And so <clears throat> she was in a very bad car accident. And uh, her father came here. Uh, he was at one of our meetings, and he just sobbed and cried. And I loved on him. And he said, please, just see my daughter. They don't expect her to live through the night. 
And I said, okay. So it was late in the evening, I, and, then, and Pastor Debbie, I took her with me, and Pastor Debbie and I went to the hospital up here in Santerra, in the ICU unit is where she was. And we walked in, you could hardly recognize her because her body was totally uh, disfigured, and she was just in a, cr a crumple, right? And all the machines were on, beep, 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 trying to, trying to help her, give her morphine and stuff like that. And so we walked in, I looked at Debbie, and Debbie looked at me, and went, whoa, okay. And so we took out our oil. There's nothing special about us. But we took out our oil, and we thought, we are going to believe that God is going to do something here. And so we anointed her with oil. I think it was Debbie anointed her with oil, you know, and we quoted a scripture over her. And at that moment, when we looked and we quoted the scripture, she all went, <gasps> like that. And, and we looked, I looked at Debbie, <laughs> we looked at me and we're like, whoa, because it kind of startled us. Right? And then all the little machines start going beep, 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 beep. And all the nursing crew and everybody comes down and they look at us and we're like, <laughs> didn't do it. And they just kind of like, whoa. Right? So we step back and then the, the young girl, Heather, she opened her eyes and the nurse goes, well, there you are, Heather. I'm so glad you came back. You've been in a very bad accident. And she couldn't talk, right? Because she was so disfigured and, and, and had had such a horrific injuries and stuff. And, uh, and so the nurse walked out, and Debbie and I walked over, and we, we laid our hands on, we started praying for full recovery, right? And then I looked at Heather, and I said, Heather, your assignment here on earth is not done. It's not done, and that's why God has preserved you here. And so you're going to have to fight like crazy. You're going to fight like crazy, but you're going to get out of that bed. You're going to get out of your bed. Three months later, she walks in these doors and comes to church with us. Okay, so I have seen, I have seen God do some marvelous things that you just couldn't even imagine, right? So the question beckons. Sharon, what happens when he says no? I hate that, but sometimes he does. Sometimes I've prayed with all my heart and with everything that's inside of me, and he says no, and the person dies, or, or the thing, you know, the person's not healed. And I tell you, I am a lover of people, not because I'm good, but because God's put that inside of me, and I just love people. I care about people because God cares. And so when I get a no from my Father in heaven, when the Holy Spirit shuts it down, it's so hard for me to take it, like racks my whole being, right? And I'm like, Lord, why, why? You know, from the depth of your being, right? And it's at that time that the Holy Spirit always comes in and he brings me comfort and he talks to me and he soothes me and says, Sharon, you're not going to understand, but I love the way you loved and I'm well pleased with what you're doing. Just now step back and allow me to do what I have to do. And it's always so hard to, to, trust, to trust God, especially when you get a no. But I tell you, I've seen so many yeses in life that I'm willing to take the journey to the no's, right? I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to try that. You know, uh, one more story I want to, I feel that I need to bring to you. Oh, I hear that. Is that God works with us. He gives us the ability to, uh, to, to experience him in such a dynamic way. And there are ordinary things through ordinary things uh, that we do each and every day. And... Uh, I was thinking about uh, the power encounter that we have. Often there are, there are light and darkness. I don't know where you're at with that, but the scriptures tells us there's light and there's darkness. And so darkness is always trying to penetrate us, always trying to, to capture our mind, right? Always, even the media, everything, it tries, to, it, it tries to make darkness bigger than it actually is. And for me, I've had the experiences where somebody has come forward for prayer and uh, they've, had, they've had issues with the demonic, right? And so they'll walk forward. This one girl I was thinking about, she walked forward. Somebody came, brought her to church, and she walked down front, and, um, and the prayer team went over to pray for her, but they knew something was up. And so they came over, and they got me, right? And they said, Pastor Sharon, come on over here. Come on over here. And I was like, okay. So I walked over, and the minute I started to get close to her, she looked, and she went, oh, I'm going to throw up. And the people around the prayer team, they're like, oh, let me go find a bucket or something, right? And I was like, okay, God, what's this about? And God said, you're dealing with demonic stuff. And I said, all right, all right. So I walked over there, and she said it to me, I'm going to throw up. And I looked, and I said, no, you're not. She goes, yes, I am. 
And I looked and I said, no, you're not in the power of the name of Jesus Christ. And she got quiet, you know, and, uh, and then looked at me again. And I said, in the power of Jesus Christ, you will not even talk. Right? And everything got quiet. And then I looked at her again. I said, now tell me your name. Because see, I told the spirit he couldn't speak. And she told me her name. And she said, I heard you talking. And inside I was wrestling. I wanted to come forward. I uh, wanted to, but something was holding me back. And I'm afraid. And I said, you do not need to be afraid. She goes, you have the answer. I said, I have no answer. I have no answer. I am just this ordinary lady. But I happen to know the one that does. And his name is Jesus Christ. And if you will give your life to Jesus, he will help you to overcome whatever it is you're struggling with today. And so the young girl, she looked at she all of a sudden it went back and she goes, I'm really going to throw up. And I looked, and I didn't even have to say where this time. I just looked and went, like, no, you're not. You're not allowed here. And so it got quiet again. And she said, I want to accept Christ. I prayed with her. She accepted Christ. At that time, my prayer the head of my prayer department was coming over and she said later, she said the Lord had told her to go move over there. She knew something was going on and her and her team did deliverance. They, in other words, they had her renounce what she had gotten herself into and why the evil spirit had been able to grab a hold of her. Guys, you do not fight against flesh and blood. You don't. It's an assault that's coming at you 24-7 and the power that Christ has given you is to be able to, to know who Jesus Christ is, right? And to have him indwell you. And so I take my time today to tell you these stories because I want to build your faith. I want you to go, oh, I can do that. So how do I step forward, Sharon? How do I start today? Well, to do that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain a conversation I had with my son when he was 10 years old, right? And in the scripture I'm going to pull is that one that talks about if you want to believe, you have to become like a little child. In other words, you have to become innocent and easy, you have to accept the word as it is. You can't question everything, right? Well, my son, uh, he, I was, he was 10, and I was getting ready. I have three boys. They're all grown now. I was getting ready to put him to bed, to give him a kiss, good night, and, and to pray over him, which was my practice. Either I did it or Andy did it. And what happened is before I could leave, after I prayed, I turned to walk out, and he said, Mom. I said, yes. He goes, I have a question for you. I said, what? He goes, do you really hear God's voice? I said, well, yes, son, I do. Matter of fact, as I was praying of you, God was reminding me of what I had studied that morning, and I was praying that promise over your life that you would love him with all your heart and mind and soul and strength. And he said, oh, he goes, I didn't hear him. <laughs> and I was in the room with you, right? I said, that's because he was talking to me. And he talks to me in my soul. And so you're not going to hear him because he's talking to me. He goes, how do you know it's him? I said, well, it's kind of like when Nana calls. She doesn't say, hey, this is Nana. Just when you pick up the phone, you know it, right? He goes, yeah. I go, why? Because she calls all the time. I said, that's right. That's how we know. And he said to me, he goes, you know that voice that you're hearing? He goes, does it ever tell you anything bad? <laughs> and I said, no. And he said, does it ever tell you to do stuff? And I went, no, he doesn't. Matter of fact, what he does is he pulls out inside what I've deposited in his word, and maybe I didn't understand it. He's now pulling it out, and I'm able to see it. And by the way, that voice we keep referring to, he's got a name, and it's called the Holy Spirit, right? It's called the Holy Spirit. And he goes, yeah, but what if he tells you to do something that's bad, Mom? And I said, well, here's what I know. He will never contradict his word, ever contradict his word. That's my first, my first thing. And then I said, and if I get confused... Well, I just will ask Daddy, and I'll ask Nanny, because they hear God's voice too. And his eyes got really big, and he went, do you mean that they can hear? And I said, yeah, they can hear him too. And he goes, do I have to wait to become an adult to hear? And I said, no, son, we can pray right now. And he goes, oh, I want that. And I said, all right, here you go, willing heart, let's pray. So we prayed, and then when we said amen, and he opened his eyes. He looked like he was going to cry. <laughs> and he said, Mom, I didn't hear. All I heard is the brothers in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I said, okay. I go, here's how it is. Do you remember when you wanted to learn Taekwondo? And he goes, yeah. I said, first you had to want it. And then what do we do next? We went to 
to find somebody that could teach, right? And so when we were with them and they were teaching you, you already had the desire and they were just showing you the techniques. They were showing you things to do and, and that was a place that you could learn. And you remember how you advanced from the low belt to the next belt to the next one. Pretty soon you, you were almost at your black belt. And he said, oh, I remember. I said, when we walk with the Holy Spirit and we define his voice and we do what he asks, it's like that. It's like that with the belts. Now, here you go. It's the same with all of you. It's that simple. It's that simple. If you want to hear the Holy Spirit, he wants to talk to you. He wants to direct you. He wants to use your lives. He wants you to be able to experience him in a, a, a magnificent way. And, and I've talked and talked and talked, and, and I was going to land this plane a different way, right, this sermon. And the Lord yanked on me and said, no, we're not going to end it this way. This is what I want to do. So he gave me four things. He gave me four things to tell you, to talk to you today about, to give you the opportunity to experience him. And this is going to require you to risk take, right? This is going to require you to risk take. And in my world, you are welcome to sit here and never do a thing if that's what you want. That's a waste of life, though. You ought to, you ought to do everything and anything you possibly can to live your life to the fullest, right? So there are four things that God gave me. And I'm going to ask you to stand up if these things are things you want. And then we're going to pray for you. And I'm going to give you opportunity to, uh, after, get some prayer for these things. Right? So get prepared. Talk to yourself because everybody's heart is going, ba-boom, ba-boom. Right? Because it's always difficult to risk take. Yes, Lord. So here you go. Oh, yes. Holy Spirit just dropped something in my mind. Here it goes. The first thing before I get to the four is there's some of you that are sitting here and you said, hey, I've experienced Christ a long time ago. I was filled with the Spirit in 1999, right? Just like that, attitude, 1999. In other words, long time. I don't need it. But if you watch, whenever I teach, what's the word I say? Come, Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is something to be experienced over and over and over. It's like the waves, they crash in, right? Over and over. And so you can experience it every day, right? And when we know where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom to, to go and to partake of it. And so here you go, four things. First thing is if you've never experienced Christ, I'm talking, you're thinking, I don't know what the heck that woman, <laughs> what, what was in her coffee this morning? That's weird. I've never heard that stuff, or I've heard it. That's kind of scary. Isn't that one of those Pentecostal churches down there or something? <laughs> no. No, it's part of the Trinity. It's part of what God has for you. So if you would like to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit, then I'm going to ask you just to stand up right where you're at so that we can pray. I need to be able to see you to know who you are, okay? So this is for those that you don't know who, who uh, the Holy Spirit is. I've taught on him, and you've never experienced him. It's okay. You can stand. All right. The second one is those of you that have had that experience. You have had that encounter with the Holy Spirit, but it's been a long time. And you're hungry and you're thirsty and you want him back into your life and you want to be able to, to let him flow and to feel him again and to be able to move as he says. If that's you, I need you to stand up. We want, I want to pray for you. Yeah. Okay. So the rest of you are good. Very good. All right, I'm going to pray for those folks that are standing right now. Okay. It's a declaration of a desire. If you were hungry and there was food, you would run to get it. You would run to get it. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're here. I thank you that you're moving, Lord. And Father, for those that stood up, Lord God, it's not so much a declaration of, of anything except for a heart that's pleading for you. It wants more of you. And so Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come and that you'd fill them up Father, like nobody's business, that you would 
push in, Lord God. And that once again, I hear that once again, the sail may it blow into your, uh, the wind blow into your sail and take you to places that, that you so longed to be at again. So Father, bring the Holy Spirit. Refresh and renew, Lord. Refresh and renew. Father, do what only you can do. Thank you, Lord. Now you guys remain standing. Everybody else stand up. The other two things that I heard, prayer teams, why don't you come down on either side? Okay. On this side, I don't know where the prayer teams, on this side, mm, no, can't be on that side. Okay. On this side over here, if you desire to have the gift of tongues, uh, heavenly language, uh, the words of knowledge, right? The words of knowledge. If you decide to, um, that you would like to have the gift of discernment, right? If you would like to uh, have the gifts that the Holy Spirit brings. He brings lots of gifts. And even if you're not quite sure, right, what's going on, if you will step out in faith, then I believe the Holy Spirit will meet you. Last night we had um, a lot of people come down to receive that, and they were, they were gifted with gifts from the Holy Spirit. And so that's what's going to happen. Okay, you're there. Okay, so Pastor Debbie over here, you can come there. And then on this side, one of the things that the Lord uh, showed me in my prayer time was that there are many people here that are hurting, that are um, experiencing loss, rejection, and uh, relational pain and things. And there's a lot of need, a lot of need. And so the Lord wants you to know he wants to meet you and he wants to supply that need. And so you can come over to this side of the, uh, uh, the stage and they'll be over there to pray with you, to anoint you if you need healing, to uh, pray those prayers of uh, victory over you, okay? So two sides, one for empowerment of gifts, the other one for healing, all right? And we're gonna go back into this last song. And as we go into this song, I know it's 1036, I'm never on time. Oh, Andy's true, it's true, he says you're never on time. So here you go, though. I took my time to tell you, um, because last night he woke me up at 3. This morning he's woken me up at, at 4 in the morning, right? Here you go. You might not be bothered, but he's bothering me. He's bothering me because I think a lot of you are being tossed about and being ripped apart, and that's not his intent, right? And so I want you to be able to come down during this next song, and then after the song, the worship people will dismiss us, okay? And I also will be down here to answer any questions or just to, to give you a hug and love on you, okay? Thanks for tuning in to today's message. If God is impacting your life through this ministry, join us in reaching others by investing today. You can give by texting your donation amount to 757-230-2110 or by going to vineyardchurch.com slash give. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an update. We'll see you next week.